All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the call up. And today we have a special guest, Mr. Dre Jameson, pitches in the Arizona Diamondbacks farm system. Dre, how are you doing today, man? I'm good. How are you? Doing good, man. Thanks for thanks for coming on and agreeing to join us. Yeah, no problem. Anytime. So, um, in this uh, it's interview, you know, we spoke about this off air, but it's just kind of to get to know you. You know, people know the real you, the actual person, not just a baseball player. Obviously, we're going to have a couple questions regarding, you know, the recent promotion because you did just get called up to AAA. You know, recently you just had your first outing there. We talked to you about that. But, um, yeah, John, anything you, you got for Dre before we start? Yeah, just um, like we were kind of talking about before we hopped on here, I'm, I'm just really excited to, to get an opportunity to talk to you. I actually used to live in Hillsborough, uh, a okay. couple miles away from the stadium uh, that you were playing at. I was there like two years before you got there to the Hillsborough hop. So uh, it's kind of funny to see that on your on your track record. And we're just uh, we're excited to to talk to you. And, you know, we, we know that you've got big things in front of you. You're getting up to the MLB here sooner than later, we're hoping. And uh, we're just excited to, to get to know you better. Awesome. Sounds good. Yeah, so first things first, how did you react when you got that call to AAA? Um, well, like I was telling you earlier, I uh, thought it was going to be a double A to the show. Um, so, I mean, it's always good to get a promotion, and I was ecstatic. You know, I was I was excited, and, you know, any any opportunity to move up levels and get closer to, you know, the ultimate dream is always a plus, so – um, it was a big move for me and, um, I'm excited about it and hopefully I'm not here long. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, it's definitely that's a goal just to keep climbing. But, um, so how, how'd you get into baseball? You know, when did that thing start? Like, was it through your grandparents, your dad? Like what, what got you into it? Honestly, I just kind of grew up in a small town, um, Started playing sports when I was four. I had two older brothers. Um, They were kind of athletic, and, you know, if I wanted to play with them, they wouldn't take it easy on me. Like, I had to play up to their standards. And my middle brother is four years older than me, and my oldest brother is five or six years older than me. I'm not quite sure. (laughs) But so they had some years on me, and I had to, you know, if I wanted to play with them, I had to compete with them. And – so I was always getting bullied, you know, by my older brothers and, and beat up and all this kind of stuff. But baseball came along when I was four, and um, I, I would say I was advanced at a young age. Um, maybe just athleticism, I'm not quite sure. But I really started diving into baseball when I – probably in, like, seventh grade, I, I knew I was somewhat decent, you know. Still always had the dream of being a professional athlete not knowing what sport – um, and then when I got into high school, I didn't play summer ball actually until my junior year of high school. I hmm. always played like the, the Greenfield youth, um, baseball stuff. And, um, so I think that's what like put me on the radar kind of later in my career, um, hmm. in high school and then got some offers and ended up going to ball state. And then, yeah, just did my thing and i mean as long as you you're good and you do your thing and yeah. they're gonna find you wherever you go so but i i started like diving into honestly like junior year of high school i knew okay maybe i could be something and um, i actually didn't think i'd be a pitcher i thought i'd be an outfielder um oh really that was gonna be my next question would... for you is is when you kind of made that transition to focusing on on pitching yeah, definitely college. Um, out of high school, I thought I was going to get drafted as an outfielder. Um, wanted to be drafted as an outfielder. And then I went to college as a two-way. Um, struggled at the plate. I mean, I can play the <laughs> position. I still think I could play the position today better than most, honestly. But the hitting aspect is where I struggled. And in high school, I didn't struggle there. Like, that was my strong suit. And got to college, took a whole summer off didn't play summer ball and then got to college and kind of struggled a little bit. And then Hmm. my, I'd say halfway through my freshman year, I was, I told Rich Maloney head coach at ball state. I was like, I think I'm going to hang up the position and I'm just going to 
pitch and he was like no not yet <laughs> and i was <laughs> like oh, like whatever and then the same stuff kept happening and happening i couldn't hit so then finally i think he agreed with me and was like yeah let's, <laughs> let's focus on the pitching and yeah. then i i pitched and then i was a pinch runner um and then yeah and then i took off my sophomore year and opened up against stanford and they I think personally, that's what got me, you know, picked where I got picked. And then, yeah, just, yeah, because I mean, you, you went from being undrafted out of high school to being a first round uh, comp story pick, you know, 34th overall, just a couple of years later. So that's, uh, it goes to show because uh, John and I were actually looking at your numbers and stuff when you were at Ball State and they're impressive. They're pretty, pretty good yeah. for somebody that went into, went into college, you know, not as a pitcher. Yeah, so for someone who, for someone who thinks that he's going to be an outfielder to striking out fourteen point three batters per nine innings, that that's a pretty uh, pretty decent number. I, I also bad. can't think of the last time that I heard of a pitcher that was also a pinch runner. Like that that doesn't uh, typically happen. <laughs> so that's well, well, I hope the organization goes to show your athleticism. This, yeah, I hope the organization hears this, but I am our fastest <laughs> guy in our whole org. Like okay, all right, even with Corbin and all of them, I'm, I I'm faster than all of them. You think you're faster than Corbin? I've already beat him in a race. Ooh, when did that happen? Uh, 2021 Instructs, I think. Oh, man, that's uh, funny. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, so How how long of a race are we talking? Like a 90 feet or like pole to pole or what, what, what happened? We raced twice. We raced probably 60 feet and then like 80, I think, because it was our whole like turf field in Arizona on that like turf field and i got him both times okay well we will uh we'll clip that that you sent that and we'll go tag the diamondbacks Corbin and the diamondbacks on yeah Twitter. we'll just let them know they know they like, know hey, let, <laughs> letting y'all know your boy says he's running fast, back so a pinch runner <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. yeah that's awesome um that's cool. so i gotta ask you know so you said you you, know, you grew up with your brothers and they kind of pushed you and that kind of that's kind of like teaching you teaching you by fire like forcing you to the fire forcing you to you know, like grow up a lot quicker than what you thought um or like what you would normally have to but um you know who inspires you to keep going like to keep pushing just to keep striving for that ultimate goal yeah definitely my mom just because um growing up she was a single mom um and took care of us all, all three of us kids and you know I look up to her in a way of like showing a lot of gumption that she went through and and things that you know, like she had to sacrifice you know her time and she wasn't able to do the things that she wanted to do to put a roof over our head and um you know just looking back on it now like there wouldn't be anything that I would change like growing up just for the simple fact of I think it's what made me who I am today and um yeah I would definitely my mom's the biggest one just for all the stuff that she's been through with my oldest brother and all kinds of stuff. So she's definitely the hero of, of who I am today. Yeah. You could definitely That's see awesome. in your face, huh? Like kind of changed when you started talking about her that it's, um, it's definitely a big thing. And, um, you know, I'm sure, especially like when you're about to prepare to leave for the season and stuff like that, it gets hard and, you know, getting ready for, the quote unquote minor league grind and all that stuff. And I um I actually worked in player development in the minor league system with uh, the Tigers. And I spent a year traveling with their low A team. And so like I was a part of, you know, all those long bus rides and you know the famous pre and post game spreads and all that yeah. fun stuff that that comes with the game. But um you know when when you're preparing yourself for all you know there's a, there's a huge mental side to the game um like what goes into it what do you do like just to get ready for all the stuff that you know it's going to start building up you know going heading into not only the season but spring training and preparation for all that yeah so i mean we have an off season and and then that off season's not hey i'm just gonna sit back and relax and when spring training comes around i'm gonna start hitting it then it's like you got to prepare yourself for spring training to then make spring training easy. And then to let the season then like, if you, if I were to just sit back and, and relax, then, you know, who knows by now I could already be wore out, 
because I didn't take the time and prepare um, physically and mentally. I mean, like you said, minor leagues isn't easy. Um, there's a lot of – you barely get paid. And, I mean, this is the first year you, we didn't have to take care of housing, but that's a huge uh, – Yeah. was a huge, like, I think, plus on, you know, organizations in minor league baseball for uh, – uh, taking action on that um yeah because yeah. you know that was one of the hardest things to do is you know yeah. find a place to live and then you find your place to live and you get paid every two weeks and it goes your month you, whatever you get yeah. paid that month you paying rent so um but I, I mean i say in the off season it's it's really what i think about is not always thinking about baseball but working on myself um physically you know to prepare myself for that next season because if you're always thinking baseball 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 year round you're, it's just gonna damper on you when baseball actually comes around yeah. so you gotta take you know i took two weeks off and didn't do anything right after the season and then i was in the gym every day and maybe not everyone goes to the gym every day but i'm a guy that wanted to put on weight so in the off season that was my goal i want to put on weight so I try to eat healthier, and I was hitting the gym every day. Um, and I put on weight, and, you know, during season, you're going to lose weight. But if I would have came in, you know, at the 175 mark, I then would have probably be down. I'd probably be down to, like, 160-something pounds. But instead, I took action, and I came in at 185 pounds. And now I fluctuate between, you know, 178 to – I mean, I'm I'm down right now. I'm 174 right now, but um, I want to be around the 178, 180 range, you know, mid-season. And yeah. I think that's the biggest thing is just preparing yourself physically and mentally. And it's hard to do mentally in the off season because you're out of the game at the time. You you know, you're not competing and you're not doing that kind of stuff. But that's when the physical aspect comes into play to make sure that you're ready for when spring training comes. And then when spring training comes, make sure you're doing the things that's going to make you ready for the season at that point. So kind of along the lines of what, what you were saying, the, the three of us, we all love the game of baseball. We all played the game of baseball at one point or another. And then at some point that story ends for everybody, right? For me, it was like in high school because I was a smaller kid and I just didn't have the developmental tools to keep up with some of the guys that were bigger, stronger, had stronger arms than I did. I was in a uh, really competitive high school that was just loaded at middle infield. And I was like a, you know, five foot five second baseman. I was just a short dude. Grew a little after that, thankfully. But <laughs> at some at some point it ends for everyone. It starts as a game that we just love and, and you love – the sights and the smells of it and just being out on the grass or whatever it is about the game that you just kind of connect to. What's it like now being at the triple a level and looking at this as a profession and as something that you're, you're trying to make it to the major leagues to, to be a professional ball player and get paid ideally at a high level. But what's it like kind of taking that, that, passion for the game that you had when you were younger and, and now looking at it like a, uh, an income source. Um, I mean, I think the biggest thing is not getting caught up where you're at, you know, because at the end of the day, like you got the minor leagues and you got the big leagues. Um, and, and that's how I take it. And yeah, you, there's steps in the minor leagues to then get to the big leagues. Um, but it's to me, it's I still haven't got to the big leagues yet. So I'm not going to change anything that I've done in my pitching or in, in anything because of wherever, whatever I've been doing has got me to where I'm at now. Yeah. The, the question just kind of, I want to know what it, what it's like to go from that childlike just passion for a game that you love playing to then, you know, looking at it as a, as a profession, like, do you still have that passion? Like, do you still feel about it? Like you, when you're a little kid, when you run out on the, onto the field? Yeah. So sorry, but um, no, yeah. So like growing up, like we used to go to the Indians games and in Indianapolis, cause I'm from Indiana, but, and you know, we didn't have a professional team, like, you know, major league baseball team. So I looked at them as like, you know, major league baseball. I didn't know any better. And 
I was just telling my mom the other day, it's kind of crazy, you know, looking back, like I'm at a level now, the same level that I'm, that I'm playing at right now is I was going to those games, you know, mm-hmm. when I was seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years old and thought, Oh my gosh, like these dudes are awesome, you know, and it's, I'm here now. And it's, it's kind of a cool thing, but the passion for the game will, I think will always be there with me because I'm a guy that's like, once I start something like, I'm not going to stop until I get what I want. Um, and my days of playing this game won't end because of me. It'll, it'll have to be someone telling me, Hey, it's time to hang your cleats up. I, I won't, I don't think I'll ever just step away from the game. Um, and that's, I think that's a competitive fire in me and the passion for the game of baseball. And um, I think that'll always stick with me. And, that's one trait I think I have is is to compete. Like I just don't think there's anyone more competitive than me, and that's gonna out compete me in a lot of things. And I I love when someone says I can't do something. That that's my favorite. When some yeah. like you're too small or you're too this, it's like okay, hmm. we'll see. Okay, well I'm gonna tell you that you can't be a pitch runner at the major league level. So go prove me wrong. Okay. <laughs> Well, no. <laughs> before my career is over, take this. Before my career is over, you will see me in the outfield. Yes. You're going to get a, an appearance out that's there. Yeah, we got to get it. Right, we got to get it. No, but that's good because it, it gives you the that competitive edge. You don't get comfortable because once you get comfortable, that's exactly. when you start getting lazy and it's just like you, you don't push anymore. And that's that's when like people start losing interest and all that. But that's kind of like a perfect segue. So what makes you you? Like, when you're not playing baseball, like, who is Dre Jameson? Um, I love to golf. Um, I golf a lot. I mean, you always probably – in my hometown when I'm home, you'll see me on the golf course every day. Um, you'll probably see me scrolling on Instagram on my shoe page trying to find different types of shoes. I'm a big shoe head. Um, and then I like cars. I, I'll – if you see me at our stoplight and you think your car's fast, then let's go, you know. Run it. <laughs> but, um, Hog <Yeah>. twice. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, outside of baseball, I'm I'm very active. I don't, like, watch much TV. I like to be doing hands-on things, and I get bored easy, so that's why I love golf because it's hard, and I'm not the best at it, mm-hmm. and I want to be really good at it. So it's something that I can play that – um, challenges me every time I go out. Yeah. Uh, I tried golfing one time and I tried hitting the ball in one direction and it went nine degrees the other way. So I, I had to stop right after that. So yeah, the, the one time, the one time that I tried golf with my dad, I stepped into it. Like I was like loading for a, like for baseball and then like kind of had to step back and I was like, that's not right. Like that's not what I'm supposed to do. With the golf, go- like the whole going from baseball swing to golf, just didn't didn't compute for me. It was just not a transition. Yeah. That would work. I can mini golf <laughs> like the rest of them, though. I promise. Oh you yeah, that. oh yeah, I can get down. Some- <laughs> hey, mini golf, I struggle with mini golf. <laughs> <laughs> so your puck games a week? Yeah, I'm not the best putter. Hey, okay. but you just gotta, gotta get, get him like one of those. Start. Gotta get him one of those Happy Gilmore like hockey stick putters. Yeah. Get them out there and yeah. see if maybe that can I'm about to invest in one of those. I don't know if you guys have seen them on the ads, but, like, you put it down by the ball and you just push the button and it shoots it. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> I've seen that, yeah. I'm about to get one of those and then just start going and play my buddies for some money. I know where it's going to be going. <laughs> Might as well. <laughs> nah, but – um, all right, so one, one final question I had was kind of going back to baseball. Um, and John and I were wondering this. Like, who who do you model your game after? When you first started pitching, you know, who was the one pitcher in the big leagues or maybe somebody in college? Like, who's the one guy you tried to emulate as, as close as, as much as you could? Um, Crazy to say, I didn't really watch much baseball growing up, and I still don't really watch it much now. But, I mean, I would say who I, who I li- like, like watching and someone that I kind of see myself kind of like is Marcus Stroman. Um, Love that. I think he carries himself and has a lot of, um, confidence on the mound. And that's big as a pitcher, like you got to have the confidence or you won't succeed on the mound. And 
as you see, I mean, he's he's making crazy plays and um, yeah, he's got and the he has the confidence though. on the mound. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I see I, I see myself like that now. Pitch sequencing and and stuff like that. I I, I don't relate myself to him in right. that yeah. sense. Um, a lot of different types of pitches and Marcus Stroman throws multiple pitches, but they're all different. Like every time he throws them, they're not the yeah. same pitch. So. Um, I, w- I would say Marcus Stroman, but like as I was growing up, I lo- I loved Albert Pujols, just because mm-hmm. he hit home runs and and that kind of stuff. And then um, through like high school and stuff like that, I was a big Kyle Gibson fan, um, hometown guy. His dad was my high school coach, so oh, cool. it was just kind of like I was always hearing about Kyle Gibson and and that kind of stuff. So he helped me through the draft process a little bit. That's awesome. Um, so there there are some guys that I've I've uh, looked up to through this game, but I think I'm a very unique kind of player, honestly, to where it's hard to describe what I do to someone else. So it's yeah. like now I'm just focusing on my craft and trying to, you know, repeat and become the best pitcher of myself rather than look at other what what do they do good? It's like, no, what do I do good? But I love yeah. watching Marcus Stroman. Like I'll, I'll do the stuff that he does on the mound. Like, you know, the little shoulders, whatever. Yeah, the, all that stuff. All the little like, antics. I'm all in on that. No, you got to. All you right. got to keep it loose in the mound. Exactly. One, one little baseball nerdy question. What, what are you working on right now? Like now that you've gotten to the AAA level, you were talking about how the ball is different um, compared to what you were throwing for earlier. What, what's kind of one you know, change that you're trying to make one thing that you're trying to improve as you're trying to get up to the, to the major league level. Well, one thing I do want to say is I have five pitches. A lot of people think I have four. Okay. Um, cool. So I well, developed got- a sinker. So I have a four seam fastball, okay. got a sinker. Okay. Change up curveball slider. Nice. Um, the sinker kind of gets pulled away that just as a fastball because i do sit i mean my sinker sits like now i'm starting to finesse with it i'm starting to take some off to get more movement so it can be anywhere from 94 to 100 and it when i first started throwing it it was 97 9 and then now my four seam is roughly 99 to 101 Um, no big deal just casual but yeah. but the sinker is like the pitch that I had to really develop, and now that's what's getting me all these ground balls, quick outs. Um, and when I fall behind an account, I'm just throwing sinkers down the middle. It's falling off the plate or early contact after that. And um, it's been probably the pitch that's going to get me to the big leagues fast. Um, that's awesome. Because if I can run it up to 100 and it's still moving like a sinker, I mean, I don't know what a hitter is going to do with it. I mean, he can't say, oh, "I got to get under this." He doesn't have enough time. So beat it right into the ground. I'm 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 fine with uh, throwing all sinkers. Like then now now my my game is it used to be, hey, I'm pumping fastballs. I'm gonna rip a slider and then maybe throw a changeup. Like that was kind of like my game when I was in high and started double A. Um, and then I really this year dove in on this sinker, and now I'm heavy sinker. And the only time I throw a four seam is when I go up in the zone. So it's I'm throwing roughly like 45 to 50 percent sinkers, and it, it's just mm-hmm. after what everyone says, it's just like fastball. It's like no, I, I throw a sinker. It, that thing moves, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it moves a lot. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's a uh, definitely the biggest part of my game that's changed is developing this sinker that I just honestly I just started throwing it like can say like a lot this year is the first year I started throwing it and I just learned how to throw it before the season last year and I threw it not much I probably threw it roughly 150 times last year just total nice now I gotta ask based off of that have you um so one big thing that I think the Diamondbacks did this um offseason was bringing in Brett Strom over from the Astros and yeah. because he's he's been such a great pitching coach for such a long time. Like, have you had the chance to work with him and talk with him yet? Yes, I have. So I was going in early um, during the lockout 
when no one else could go in. I wasn't on the 40 man or any of that kind of stuff. So, um, I was able to go into the complex and, and work out and he came in and would watch my bullpens. And then during like our spring training, I was in minor league spring training, but me and Bryce Jarvis would get to go over and go to like a meeting. Um, and it was what, what he was t- like telling us is like, I mean, basically fastballs up and in look way harder than a fastball down and away. Like you can throw 99 down and away and it's going to look like 94, but you can throw 94 up and in and it's going to look like a hundred. So mm-hmm. it's a, it's a placement of pitches. And um, I haven't really done like any like drill kind of work with him, but just talking with him and um, just a little cues that he's, you know, told me to help my game. I mean, he's a, he knows what he's talking about. He's a, I think probably one of the best things the Diamondback picked up, honestly. Yeah. Um, And as you can see in the big leagues, it's kind of like switched the role a little bit Um, from last year. I mean, we were not too, not too hot last year. And then now these guys are, you know, competing and yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, – he, he definitely knows his stuff, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, you guys have got a hell of a farm system, a lot of really, really good players coming up, you know, in, in short order. So it's going to be fun to see uh, the progress that the Diamondbacks make and, and that whole transition and what it looks like when you get there and what you're able to add. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a good time. There's a lot of stuff Should going on there. Should be fun. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, no, think, time, yeah, no, we're, we're excited. And, you know, we've been following you for a bit and, you know, it's it like, like we said, it was really cool to see, like, as soon as we, as we yeah. reached out yeah. to you, like right after you got the promotion to AAA. So congrats again on that. And, you know, yep. thank you again for, for coming on and just talking with us for a little bit. It was a ton of fun. Awesome. Thank you. When, when you do finally get that, that call up though, you got to come back. We got to get you back on here. Right, yeah. I got you That's for good. sure. Yeah, let's yeah. hope it's like less than a month. Okay. All right. Let's uh, let's, let's keep an eye on it. So if you're in fantasy, just stay tuned. Oh, okay. there we go. Let's see. Let's see, who's, your let's see who's who's got you. That's right. Christian. Oh, I do. Yeah. That's already right. has I got you him. in in the league that I'm in. Yeah. With him. Yeah. yeah. But no. Thanks yeah, again, Dre. Yeah, true. Truly appreciate it. Um. Good luck. You know your next your next start. You know your next few next few starts in AAA, and hopefully you're not too many before we do get to see you up in in the big leagues. For sure, I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining us on this episode of the Call Up, and we'll see you next time.